Hey everyone, my name is Ichiban and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have a bit of a different video for you. It's not a vlog, but it's a video editing and tip tutorial. I'm going to share with you my five favorite techniques that I commonly use in all my videos and personal work. Let's get into it. Tip number one, frame blending. This is a feature I use very commonly in all my videos. Whenever you see hyperlapse or sped up clips in my video, it's usually with frame blending. It's pretty much the secret sauce to my time lapses. To give you a quick example of frame blending and no frame blending, here's an example with frame blending off and here's an example with frame blending on. As you can see, it's much smoother with frame blending on. What frame blending does is add a bit of motion blur to each frame of your video. This makes the transition from one frame to the next a bit smoother. And when you add that up to your entire clip that you frame blended, the whole clip is a lot smoother to watch. So here's how you do it. It's pretty easy. All you have to do is right click the clip, go down to time interpolation, and then click frame blending. And that's it. This little change will make a big difference to your time lapses. Frame blending works best when there's a lot of big and linear motion as it makes it easier for Premiere Pro to analyze your clip and add the motion blur. In this example clip here, there's not too much motion, so the effect of frame blending isn't that pronounced. Still looks good though. All right, tip number two, warp stabilizer. This drag and drop Premiere Pro effect has saved my butt a whole bunch of times. Sometimes when filming video, it's not always possible to keep steady, especially when you're shooting handheld or if you're in a shaky or windy environment. Warp Stabilizer will analyze your video clip and take out the jitters, shakes and bumps, giving you a more stable, less vomit inducing clip. It's pretty easy to use Warp Stabilizer. All you have to do is go to the effects panel or shift five on your keyboard and search Warp Stabilizer in the search bar. From there, you just drag Warp Stabilizer onto the clip that you want to stabilize. You have to give it some time to analyze your clip. This may take a while if your clip is very long or very shaky. When it's done, you should have a stabilized clip. Here are some quick pro tips about using Warp Stabilizer. The first thing you're going to want to do is to adjust the smoothness percentage found in the effects control panel or shift 7 on your keyboard. By default, the smoothness setting is set to 50%, which is usually too much for me. I usually try to start from 5 to about 25% to see how it goes first and find what works best for the clip. There are, however, a few things to note about using this effect to stabilize your clips. Number one, using warp stabilizer will slightly crop into your clip depending on how much shake there is. You can check how much is cropped in after the effect is applied by going to the effects control panel and look for auto scaling, which should indicate a percentage of how much is cropped in. You should also note that Warp Stabilizer, while great, can't save every clip. Take this clip for example. I was hand holding the camera while walking in a windy environment and you can just see how much the camera is shaking from my movement. Here's what happens when you try and Warp Stabilize this very bad shaky clip. As you can see, there's a jello effect which makes this clip unusable. Warp Stabilizer is particularly bad at taking out the up and down jolts caused by walking. Alright, tip number three, auto reframe. Viewing a full landscape cropped shot like this is nice, but with the increased consumption of media on mobile phones, increasingly more common for clients to ask you to deliver your video in multiple formats, from landscape to 4x5 to complete 9x16 vertical. It can be a huge pain to re-edit and recrop a video like this to fit a vertical format, especially when the subject is tracking across the screen like this. Without manual keyframing, a technique we'll talk about later in the video, the subject doesn't quite stay in the center of the vertical frame and at times even leaves the frame altogether. This is where auto reframe comes in. It's a drag and drop effect that uses AI to automatically detect your subject and reframe it into the desired crop format. So here's how you do it. Go to the effects panel and search auto reframe. Drag and drop the effect onto your clip. Give it a second to analyze your clip and you should be good to go. Not only is your clip automatically resized to fit your desired crop format, Premiere has detected your subject to keep them in the center of the frame. Of course, it isn't always perfect, so you can dive into the effects control panel to adjust the settings to get it to just the way you like. This effect will hopefully save you a lot of time in re-editing your videos for all the different formats. On to tip four, quick cuts. This is more of an editing and style technique rather than a Premiere Pro feature, but it's something I use a lot in my own personal work. The idea here is to use a lot of consecutive quick cuts from one clip to the next to increase the energy and pace in your edit. This technique is a favorite of mine because it doesn't give the viewer enough mental time to process what's happening on screen. Instead, it forces the viewer to take it all in subconsciously and leaves them with a feeling rather than an understanding of what just happened. 
Now, I think this is a much more powerful technique to get a message across. But that said, I would probably use this technique sparingly and for short periods only as you don't want to give your viewer any seizures or headaches. A quick pro tip to help you edit these quick cuts easier is to use ripple cutting which is Q or W on your keyboard. As you can see here I've got this clip selected and if I want to ripple cut and press Q on the keyboard anything before the playhead will be deleted and the clip will be shortened. The opposite is true if I press W on the keyboard anything in front of the playhead will be cut and deleted. This makes editing a lot easier and more instinctual which will help with the quick cuts. And the final tip number 5 is keyframing. Keyframing in Premiere Pro is probably one of the more powerful and fundamental techniques. It allows you to control any effect over a period of time. So what does this mean exactly? In this clip here I've used rotation keyframing to spin the video. It's pretty easy to activate keyframing. Go to the control panel, look for the effect you're trying to keyframe, in this case rotation, and click the stopwatch to the left. Once you click the stopwatch you'll notice that it drops a diamond to the right. This is a keyframe. Set another keyframe further down the clip and set the rotation value to how much you want the clip to turn. Premiere Pro will gradually change the effect value from one keyframe to the next, and that's it. In the control panel, anywhere you can see this stopwatch icon, you can keyframe. From gradually changing your color grade or exposure from light to dark over time, to keyframing a digital pan of your clip, moving it slowly from the left to the right, all the way to keyframing a Gaussian blur effect. So you can gradually bring in the blur via keyframing over time. Again, anything in the effects control panel with this stopwatch icon can be keyframed, which makes this a super powerful technique. And those are my five favorite video editing tips and techniques. Hopefully you learned something from this video. Subscribe, like, and leave a comment if you have any questions. See ya.